Hello and welcome to this view build tutorial. This tutorial centres around sloping or contoured land. I tend to build my house first before trying to contour the land. And then what I tend to do is I go to the edit menu, go to attach to, click and hold the left button on the base floor plan. While I'm holding the left button I drag it to a cube and let go. Now if I go to move mode the cube controls the house and what I'm going to do I'm just going to get rid of using separate object I'm going to separate that floor plan away from the house and from the cube and I'll just move that out of the way so now I can control the house completely with this cube. Now you can make that bigger and smaller and when you're ready when you're getting images from it you can simply make it transparent. Anyway, okay so what we're going to do to create a simple sloping block I'll just go to the drawing tool set, create a rectangular surface, go to ob object options, click the rotate object and we can simply enter the slope we want. There we go. And there's our sloping block. Now what I might do, I'll just copy that texture to it. We can see it there. Now we can also see that we've got areas of the land coming through and areas where we either need to build some supports or a foundation. So what we'll do first is we'll get the whole tool, click and hold the shift key and while you're holding it just select that sloping block as a working plane and we're just going to cut a hole like so where the house goes into the land. Now you can just lower that down there and then to fill in what I'm going to do if I click on that foundation and build another set of walls and I'll just make them a bit higher so I can see them like so and there they are there now if I go to object options wall segment select all the segments that are attached to that new set of walls go to the move tool and use the right mouse button and drag them down and that fills in underneath Now beauty with um, a flat sloping block, you can very easily build driveways and garden beds the same way you would on a perfectly flat section. Okay, the next type of land is a contoured land set and we need a site plan for this un unless you have a rough idea of what it is, but I'm going to use an actual site plan I'm going to load that in and I'll scale it. So let me just find a measurement here. There's one there, the boundary. And I'll just scale that. Like so. And we'll just align that. Now you might have to turn the angular grid off so we can rotate that and we probably don't need those anymore so we'll just delete those now once we've got it set up I'm going to go to texturing copy all click and hold the left button on the site plan and drag it to the grass and you'll get that effect now we can now delete that and if we need to rotate it just use the texture rotate and you'll see this if you click and drag the left button out you'll get this sort of clock face now the further you move it out the smaller the increments of rotation if you move it in closer it'll rotate quicker and we'll just align that then use the texture move mode and we'll just use the left mouse button and align it there. 
Now what we can do is we can scale this land. So if we go to options, go to land, and what we'll do is we'll make the tile size. So at the moment this piece of land is made of 25 little squares that way and 25 little squares that way. And each square across is 3.75 metres and each square that way is 3.61 metres. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change it to 1 metre, 1 metre and see if that's big enough. Not quite, we'll make it 2 by 1.5 and that's pretty good. Now we've got our site plan, we're going to mark in the contours. And for that, if we click on the land and go down to polygon contour tool and we're just going to make a guess that this contour starts there so click the left button and then click at each major angle change and when you get to the end just click the right button and you've created a contour and then simply just repeat this process for the other ones now you're not going to get a high degree of precision so there's no point adding points everywhere along that line There we go, and like so. Now obviously we can't see the contours under the house, but we're, we're guessing they go that way. You could always move the house out of the way. There we go. And we're left with that. Now we can see here we have 101.25, 101, 100.75 so what we'll do is we'll make the lowest point on the land, we'll call that 0 so in the object options, in the general tab we'll set the position for the lowest point at 0 now you can enter the actual height of 100 um, if, if if you want to build your land right up but I, I find for most houses it's easier just to set the lowest point on the contours as zero and then just go up by the amount of changes so the next point is 25 the next point is 0.5 the next point is 0.75 the next point is 1 and the next point's 1.25. So now we've got a lightly contoured block. Now, for argument's sake, we'll make these more uh, larger steps. So we'll call that one, we'll call that one two, we'll call that one three meters, four meters. meters and six meters. Now you can also just use the move tool and click and hold the right button and move these points up and down if you want to smooth out the contours. Um, so you can change the the harshness of the angle within it. So if you've got a light cliff face you can simulate that effect too. Now, in here, we can either cut it out with a hole tool, like so, and just bear in mind though that this can be quite processor intensive and can, in some instances, uh, cause a crash. So just make sure you save it at this point before you go cutting holes in the land. Okay, and there's our land. That's one way. The other way is to use what's called cut and fill. 
and that's using the polygon plateau tool and that's simply going around the house or following the shape of the house and that creates a blue segment that you can use the right button to raise or lower. Finally you can add survey points which is a simple contour where you can simply just add a point, a spot point. And it does its best to create that. Now you'll also find under the land tool you can raise the detail like so and that simply increases the number of squares in this overall land segment. Just be aware that when you start getting to 200 by 200 you actually have 40,000 points which can slow the computer down and be more, be more prone to crashing if you cut holes. So the other way you can also simply build add new land segments by going to objects tools and creating a, a second land segment so if we go one by one and that can have its own contours on it now you notice how that land segment's created on the slope. We may want to create that parallel to a flat ground. So simply go to rotate mode, click on the land segment, and click on the bottom half of this block, which is the reorient tool, and that'll make it flat. And that works for any tool too. And we again we can raise the detail of that, we can add points to that. If you want to delete a point just simply hit delete and then just move something to update it and that can have its own contours. And you may just lower that to merge it. There we go. Uh, we'll just lower the detail on that so we've got a decent amount of detail. The final contouring um, is the most precise method and it really just simply means we convert the whole thing to a series of points and we edit manually each point. Now do not do this until you've got your rough contour set up because once you do this conversion you're unable to return to a contoured piece of land. So if I go create editable mesh, click on the floor and I'll end up with a point cloud and we can simply use the right button and position each and every point like so. And remember the more points you've created in your point cloud the slower your point cloud will be to edit. Now we can move it left and right to create banks and different formations. At the end, simply go to Tools, Convert to Mesh and click on that land segment to turn the points off again. Like so. Once you're happy with your block, we can simply apply a texture to it. So if I go to texturing, uh, we'll go textures and I'll go to architectural and we can apply any texture you like. like so. Now obviously drawing footpaths and paving on this is going to be a lot more complex than just a flat piece of land and the way I do it is I use the rectangular foundation tool and I literally build it in segments. 
So if I wanted a path to come down there, I would build it based on each angle and I'll just set a working plane or I'll just get the rough shape and what I'll do is I'll create a point everywhere and I'll just extrude that like so There we go. And then I go to Create Editable Mesh and I literally create the shape I want. This can be quite tedious and you might have to start a shape off again if you find you haven't got enough points. And you may also find that when you get to this you may actually have to re-edit the land just to hide it. So if I create the land back into an editable mesh and I just lower those points near it. Try and only move these points vertically. You can move them horizontally but try not to move them past another set of points. So there's, there's our basic types of contouring. Um, of course there are ways of cleaning up your model so that you don't end up with these sort of large gaps. And that can be simply grabbing hold of each point and hiding it in the land underneath. Now you can also select multiple points to move. by going to the select tool, click the right button on the first point, make sure you deselect the land, you can see the land's flashing so just click the right button on the land to deselect it and then click the right button on each point, if you click the wrong button or the wrong thing just simply right click it again then go to move mode and you can move a group of points um, you can easily create small dams or water holes by simply creating a depression in the land and filling it with water. Now I'm just going to reorient that segment and we'll make it blue. Now there are water textures in some of the versions And there we go. Thank you.